What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Denise Salcedo and I'm excited to bring you another awesome interview. Today I have none other than pro wrestler and actor Danny Limelight. Danny, what's up? Hey Denise, how are you? I'm doing really good. I'm so happy for you, by the way. I'm just excited uh, seeing everything that's happening for you. And this is honestly really just the beginning. Thank you so much. It's, a, it's been a crazy, crazy ride, but I feel like everything's finally coming together and, and, you know, paying off the hard work. So it feels really, really good. But look at you. You've been doing a lot, too. I've been watching all the stuff you've been doing, and you've been killing it, girl. Thank you. Thank you. So now, obviously, I want to start off by congratulating you on your new Japan Pro Wrestling debut. Um, <laughs> tell us about what it was like working on Lions Break Collision. Wow. Um, first of all, I just want to thank Rocky Romero and David Marquez because, you know, David Marquez brought me to Championship Wrestling from Hollywood in 2015 when I was just a little green boy. And he introduced me to Rocky. And in the fall that just passed, they had the Young Lions or New Japan tryout. And Rocky invited me out to the tryout. He brought me on. You know, I, I tag teamed with Mysterioso. We wrestled the Regal Twins, who are a great tag team. And we just put on a show and they really liked it. And so Rocky told me that he loved it. And, you know, he gave me some solid feedback and some critique on what he wanted to see different. And he told me, you know, we want to use you. We want to have you on. We're just waiting for the right opportunity. And then when, you know, quarantine happened, you know, he kept in contact with me, you know, constant updates. And finally, he was like, all right, we're going, you know, we're going to be going this date. Um, we just need you to go get tested for COVID. Make sure you're negative for the safety of the boys. And yeah, and, and I went, I got tested. Everything was cool. And you know, just being there, it was, oh, man, it was so awesome. Just every, just seeing the whole setup and, you know, hearing my music hit and coming out and seeing the New Japan logo in the ring and the apron. And then, like, in the background, the setup had, like, the, the logo with the lights on it. And I got to wrestle some really awesome people. I had two matches with them, and it was amazing. I don't want to say who I'm wrestling because they haven't announced it yet. So it's kind of a surprise, but I will say that this person is one of the best in the world. And so it was so much fun. That's really incredible. And I love the fact that, you know, you mentioned Rocky Romero and how he basically kept up with you. And, you know, I've taught, I've, inter I've had Rocky Romero on here before. And so I just got to say that is the great person to have on your side, you know, sort yes. of seeing your talent and whatnot. Uh, what was your reaction, though, when Rocky said, like, hey, this is happening and we want you there? Like, you're one of the guys that we want to make sure we have on there. Uh, it was like, it was like, not, I don't want to say it was unreal because. I know I work hard and I, I know I'm like, I work on my talent all the time. I get better and better. So I, f I feel like I belong there. But when I went to the tryout, there were so many people there, like so many talented guys that wanted to be a part of this. And when he told me, it just like, I got like the goosebumps on my hand. Like it just felt good. Like I felt like my spider senses were going off or some crazy, like, <laughs> like, like feeling. Cause I was like, wow, this is happening. You know, and the first person I, I called, I called my dad and I was like, dad, blah, 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 blah. And uh, my dad has this cool little saying where he's like, you never know who's watching. So you got to make sure every time you go out, you put on a show, da 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 He's like, I told you, da 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 And, like, it was just so awesome. Like, my, my, it just felt great. And, and Rocky, you know, has been a great mentor for over the years. I've known him since 2015. And he's always been a stand-up guy. So being able to have somebody, like, that you respect, see the potential in you and want to have you a part of this show and be able to say, yes, come on, let's do it, it feels good and it feels, like, rewarding. First of all, your dad is 100% correct <laughs> on that. You never know who's watching. Um, what would you say were some of the major differences between working with New Japan Pro Wrestling and working and like from, from some of the previous promotions that you've worked with, just to kind of show like how, you know, how important it is to work with a company like that? Yeah, so I mean, wow, big difference. New Japan is one of the biggest wrestling companies in the world. Um, their fan base is huge. And it's kind of like, where some of the best have came from, you know, you look at guys like Kenny Omega, TJ Perkins, AJ Styles, you know, the young bucks, you think of the guys that have came through, through new Japan, you know, and it's like, how do you live up to that? Cody Ibushi, Will Ospreay, you know, Ricochet, like all these guys. And it's like, you know, once you, once, once you make it to that level, when you get to wrestle in that ring, it's like, wow, like these guys are considered my peers now, you know, like, a, like these guys are the guys that maybe one day I'm going to be stepping into the ring with, you know? And it's like, Comparing that to like wrestling on Impact, I wrestled on Impact one year ago next month, 
And it was my debut, and I wrestled a fireway for the X Division match with, with guys like Trey Miguel, Ace Austin, Jake Crist, um, and, and uh, Adrian Quest. And it was like, you know, being in that locker room felt great, you know, like all those guys. But, but then, you know, when you're in the independent scene and you're in the same locker room with, with, with some of the best, hottest, up-and-coming independent wrestlers, it's every, every different promotion, everything has their own feel. But being in, in that New Japan locker room, you know, I was – in there with Jeff Cobb, TJ Perkins, Brody King, like some of the best right now out there. And it, it just felt good. It felt like, okay, this is a different kind of feeling. You know, it's, it's the, it felt, it felt like the big leagues, you know, it's like when you're playing JV basketball, it's all cool. And not saying that the independent companies on the thing are, are JV, but, but when you get that call up to varsity, it's like, Oh, you know, you get the Letterman jacket and you start walking down the hallway and you feel like the swag and like yes. the pride. It felt like that. Sitting in that locker room with all those talented guys, you know, it's, it's just like, it felt good. And, and everybody was super welcoming. It was very, very respectful. It was, everybody kept, you know, they had the, the COVID situation set up nicely so that everybody could be safe. And it felt really, really good. And it felt even better to be able to do that and represent for Puerto Rico and New York, you know? Yes, exactly. Okay, so, you know, you, you talk about, you know, being able to take this step and how important it was for you. And I feel like that's only natural considering that, you know, you've been continuing and pursuing this career. So it's that natural next step that you're bound to take at some point, which is just really awesome. So now, earlier you mentioned the tryouts and being there with a bunch of guys, but I do have to mention that you and I have worked a couple of shows together. And I will tell you, obviously, as a ring announcer, I'm sitting there watching every single match <laughs> yes so when I'm there I will tell you that the shows that we've worked on you were one of the people where I was like oh dang like he's <laughs> impressive and you were one of the standouts for me personally so, so I much. hope I wanted you to know that and um so with that being said you know you're very athletic you always have a lot of uh, really great move set, a lot of really different stuff that you incorporate. But tell us a little bit about how you got started in the business um, and what were some of your major challenges that you faced? Um, so I started training in 2014 with a school that I'm not going to talk about because I don't, you know, there's just, I just don't want to talk about of them. Were, um, but some of the challenges I faced, when I, when I started, I was, I don't want to say I was young, but, but I was, what? 22 years old, I guess that's young. Wow. Right. I was, I was very cocky, you know, because I was, I was still in the military. I was in the Marines. I, I knew that I was in top tier shape. I knew that I had a background in certain things. And I just felt like it came so natural in me, even though looking back at my footage now, I'm like, Whoa, was, that was, that looked bad. You know, it happens to all of us. <laughs> Don't worry. But I had, I was very arrogant and I rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So I think that was the biggest challenge that I faced was, I don't want to say burning bridges because I was still getting booked like everywhere, but it was not being people not wanting to like be cool with me, you know, or like right. be or like have that relationship with me, you know. And and I, I wasn't trying to like be disrespectful. I just I have a personality that's very strong, and so I rub a lot of people the wrong way. So when I took my break from wrestling because I went to go be a drone instructor in the Marine Corps, um, I said, if I ever come back to wrestling, which I already knew I wanted to come back, but we always say, if I ever come back, like, <laughs> I wanted to do things differently. And so when I came back, I tried to be a little bit more to myself, a little more reserved. You know, I wasn't trash talking as much online. I wasn't, like, stirring the pot. I wasn't, I didn't try to rub people the wrong way. And I feel like a lot of people that gave me the second chance seen the difference. And I feel like a lot of people kind of, you know, show me a little bit more love now than they did before. I still feel like there's still a lot of people out there that are holding who I was six years ago when I first started, you know, against me. But, but I think that a good majority of the people and the ones that in my opinion matter have given me that chance and seeing that I, I do work hard. I am talented and, and I, I'm very passionate about what I do. And I think sometimes my passion gets in the way, but they understand it now. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because I don't think that's what I would expect from you because I I think we met like maybe two years ago and I remember thinking, oh my God, Danny Limelight's like one of the nicest persons that I've met in wrestling. And mentioning when we were talking, I remember you saying that you were still kind of on the fence with what you were going to do with, you know, your military background, your military situation and wrestling. And I remember like inside my head thinking, I really hope he doesn't give up wrestling. But <laughs> and I, I think I sort of alluded that to you, but I couldn't obviously be like yeah, make this decision or whatever yeah. but I remember thinking that 
And so with that being said, when did you sort of make the official decision to be like, you know what, this is where I belong? Um, yeah, so when we met, I had just came back. So I had, I had that time to think about my, my behavior and things I wanted to do differently. So you, you met me on the good end of, of what, <laughs> my behavior. But I made the decision in 2018. It was the, my, it was the year of the spider. That was what I was running with. Um, actually, no, 2019 was the year of the spider. And tw 2018 was the comeback. So I think, I think 2018 going into 2019, when I said this is going to be my year, and I started having all these out of state bookings and stuff like that. I, and I don't want to, I'm not trying to sound cocky. like I, I made more money a few months in a row wrestling than I was making in the Marine Corps. When I was on a going on 10 year career as an E6 in the Marine Corps. And I was like, okay, if I'm making this much money doing something I absolutely love, not that I don't love being a Marine because I did it for 10 years. Like I'm wearing a Marine Corps shirt right now. Yeah. Like I, I, I just do wrestling. And without the Marine Corps, there's no limits to what I can do because we have a lot of restrictions of places we can and can't go. And then if they want to make me work on a weekend, I have to cancel a booking. Like, oh, I can't take a flight if I want to take a flight. Like, there's so many, so many, there's such a process to get days approved off of work and stuff like that. And so when I was, I saw how much money I was able to make working part time wrestling with a busy schedule in the military, I was like, I was like, what if I just did this, you know? And, and what if I pursued my dreams of being, you know, in Hollywood and wrestling? Like, and I, I just went for it. And then, and then obviously, you know, I got in, most people that know me know I got, I got in trouble in the military. And so it, it was no longer an option anyways. And so I was like, well, I wanted to get out anyways, you know, so might as well get out now that wrestling is going good instead of pushing it more than that. And, <laughs> and um, yeah. And so I made the decision to go with it. And I, I'm glad I, I love, I love being a Marine. I miss it sometimes, but, but I, I felt like I did my time. I did 10 years active duty to this country and, I gave him my all. I made Marines. I gave back. And now I can do what I love. And I'm having so much fun with it. Dude, 10 years, that's a lot more than many of us can say <laughs> right there. And I almost feel like maybe it was a blessing in disguise, you know, sort of having mm -hmm. that, you know, next phase of your life. So now who would you say are some of your biggest influences in wrestling and maybe some of your peers that have given you the best advice when it comes to wrestling? Um... My biggest influence ever is The Rock. He's my favorite of all time. Um, just, just you too, huh, baby? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> the Rock played Maui. He played Maui, didn't he? <laughs> Sorry, oh, yeah. my daughter. <laughs> yeah, I watched that movie, man. I, I, that song is still stuck in my head. But yeah, The Rock. He just everything about that man. They're like you know, and then and then him being a wrestler that got into Hollywood, you know, and it, it kind of just like the same path that I want to do, and just seeing how he is as a father, as a husband seeing how he is with, with how motivating and inspiring he is. There's times I wake up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night. I'll check Instagram and he's like up eating pancakes or something. And I'm like, oh, he's working. And I'm like, if this man is working, he's the highest paid act in the world. Like, why am I sleeping? You know, like he just inspires me. So definitely The Rock. Um, then, I, then after he left, you know, I loved watching Rey Mysterio, Eddie Guerrero. Um, Randy Orton is one of my favorites of all time. And, and actually, I have a pretty dope story with Randy Orton. Oh, awesome. Um, I want to hear it. Yeah, definitely. We'll talk about that a little bit. And as far as peers, um, one, of, one of my best friends in this business, Chris Bay. Um, I think that, that he's one of the most humblest dudes, super talented. I've wrestled him three times in three different states. Um, wrestled, we wrestled in Cali, in Vegas, and we wrestled in Rhode Island. And we had three great matches. Um, he's an awesome dude. He, sometimes I ask him, you know, there's times when he, when he got signed, we had a long talk and before I was one of the first people to know that he got signed. We talked about it before he announced it. And he just told me that, you know where your time's coming, your time's coming, man. You're a good dude. Just keep putting the work. And another one of my favorite people is Scorpio sky. Um, I used to go out to taco Tuesday with him and Watts and we would talk all the time. And he'd be like, look, man, you know, I started 17 years ago. I just got signed. And I'm like, wow, 17 years is a long time, you know? And he was like, I told myself, if I don't get it by this, this many years, that I'll, I'll be done. And he just, like, told me that he kept putting his limitations on himself. And when he no longer set those limitations, that's when his year really took off and he got signed. So I need you and to I, stop, baby. I almost feel like, you know, it was different timing, obviously, from Scorpio Sky to where everything is now in wrestling. There's way more opportunities, which is obviously a plus for you and for guys like Chris Bay. And it's funny because when you mentioned Chris Bay, Earlier in the back of my mind, I was thinking there's something about Danny Limelight and Chris Bay that is similar, not in terms of like specific like wrestling or style or anything like that. It's more of personality or like that vibe that you guys give off. It's like 
very, very uh, similar. So it's kind of interesting Thank that you, yeah, he, you guys are close friends. He, he is, man. We went, we, last time I saw Chris was before the quarantine. We went out to the, the, the fitness expo and we just had a good time at the fit expo, joking around, stuff like that. Every time he comes out here, um, a good majority of the time he's resting, he'll come at my place and we'll work out together and stuff. Awesome dude, man. Really, yeah, really got he's awesome. Yeah. Shout out to Chris Bay. Yeah, seriously. And I have an interview <laughs> with Chris Bay too, so I'll link it at the bottom so people can go ahead and check it out and whatnot. Awesome. Um, so now, one of the things that I also want to talk about is obviously we're friends on Facebook. And here's the thing that I noticed about you is that you are always doing something. I was thinking <laughs> to myself, man, I need Danny Limelight energy because you're always working on something different. And obviously, you know, you're pursuing both wrestling and acting simultaneously. Um, tell us a little bit about how you sort of balance both worlds because I'm always seeing you booking jobs working on films or whatever it may be you're always doing something thank you so much I I've always felt like time management was something that I can control um and I really got an understanding of it when I became a drone instructor and I was working 22 hours a day 13 weeks straight with recruits you know barely any sleep and understanding how to manage time and make things easier for me and I think that it's that leaving the military and then coming to the civilian world where everything feels like at a standstill and nothing's really going on. I feel like I can manipulate time and like make it work to my like advantage. And so I, I stay busy. I'm up really late. I'm up early. I'm, I go to sleep really late is what I meant to say. Now I'm up late. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the opposite. I do stay yeah. up late, but, uh, but, but you get what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and I just, I, I just, I fit in my schedule. I, I'm never sitting still. I'm never just laying down. I don't get to take naps. Like, I'm working, I'm writing scripts, I'm shooting them. I, I, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to surround myself with very talented people that are very, very driven and want it just as bad as I do. And that's why I launched Limelight Productions, you know, and, and I just want to keep people around me that want to want to be successful, you know. So I just want to shout out, you know, my boy Miko, who's he's been directing most of my films. I want to shout out Jeff Santone and Justin Naranjo, who are also involved in the wrestling community. And and they 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 record and edit all my my films. I want to shout out my daughter right here, who's <laughs> driven, and I'm putting her to work since she's five years old, grinding. Six. Well, you're six now, <laughs> but you started when you were five. And and I just you know I just really really surround myself with people that want it as bad as I want. And whenever I feel like I'm slacking, I I I get I push up forward, and 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 they motivate me to to grind, you know. And even my roommate, like he. He makes all the music for my films. So that way I don't have to worry about copyrighted music. He just like, I said, hey, this is the film we're doing. This is the concept. This is the theme. And he goes and he puts something together because he's going to school for music production. So it's just, it's just surrounding yourself with people that, that, that really, really, really want it. You know? So shout out to my roommate, Ao. And yeah, I'm just fortunate enough. And I, I, I'm not going to rest till I'm where I want to be. And I feel like that's how everybody's mindset should be. And if it's not, that's okay. And, you know, speaking of that, you know, you're talking about your, you know, not only are you pursuing your own career, which is hard enough already, but also you're helping out your daughter, Khaleesi, with also her acting career. How has that been uh, in terms of sort of balancing both worlds? Well, Khaleesi is very smart. She's, she understands what's going on. She, she was, I act like I'm 18. She acts like she's 18. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God, that's the best <laughs> line I've ever heard. <laughs> She's she she gets it, you know, and, and she's always had that natural charisma and energy that just makes people gravitate towards her. So when I'm like, yeah, I don't treat her like an adult, but I, I educate her like an adult. And I know what I what people are talking about. I know what they say in their mind. The, I'm thinking in my head, what do they do me? So wow, you're way smarter than I yeah. was at six she, years old. She analyzes things as like she analyzes things mm -hmm. very maturely, and, and and I tell okay. You could go play, go do this, go do that. Okay, and then I'm like, it's work time. And when I say it's work time, she knows. She sits down. This week alone, well, last week, she had five auditions. And yesterday, she had a call back. Um, and she just grinds nonstop. And even with the short films, and now that she knows how to read and write, I give her a script. Hey, read whatever word you don't know. Come to me. I'll help you. She goes, she reads it. And she memorizes scripts just like that. So today, matter of fact, she had, we're shooting a film, a short film this week. Um, it's two shoot days. We're starting today and then we're finishing it on Saturday and it's about human sex trafficking. So we're trying to spread awareness of sexual assault, mm -hmm. sex trafficking and stuff like that for girls, because obviously, right. you know, I have a little girl and, and the, the, the girl that came to me to write the film, she, you know, she had her own issues that she wanted to put out there. And so I wrote the film, um, Miko's directing, all my people are shooting it. And, and she learned her, she learned her script super, super fast. She learned her, her role and 
today we're going to go shoot it. I love that. Honestly, I can't even tell you how big of a fan I am of your guys' relationship because, you know, I wish that I had someone like that at that age pushing me to like, you know, be my better self and work and all. And it's so important. Like, I know it sounds wild, but nowadays, like once you hit a certain age, it's like you have to get to work or you're yeah. behind. So the fact yeah. that she's already getting that head start in her career is awesome. And it's only going to further, uh, further her life along even better. So awesome props, amazing job on that seriously um so now before we end our interview portion i do have one more question for you uh what are some of your future goals both in acting and in wrestling oh uh, i don't really like acting i like to art paint um i'm more like a i don't do acting that much it's like a, uh, <laughs> i don't go. love acting <laughs> um so for me sit down over there baby. hold on i'm almost done sit down over there for me um future goals um, obviously, I want to sign a major contract to a major wrestling company, whether that be New Japan, Impact, WWE, AEW, you know, um, but I want to make sure it's, the, it's where I'm going to fit best at. Um, and, it's, and acting in stunts, I just want to be an action actor. I just want to be able to put on for the stunt community as well as, you know, use everything that I feel like I can in my, in my tool set. To, to, to go out and showcase my talent and show the world and set that standard for her. You know, I, I, I want to, I want these next couple of films that I'm shooting to get accepted to film festivals because I do have four scripts lined up already that we're going to be shooting over the next two months. And it's just making sure that everything comes into fruition. You know, all the work that I'm putting in pays off. And I believe that it will because I'm hardworking. And that's pretty much all I can say as far as goes. The rest is just going to come. Maybe sit down. <laughs> that's honestly awesome and like that, that's the way it is like I know it's kind of annoying when people say keep doing what you're doing and you're like I don't know what I'm doing but that's really the truth though you just got to keep doing what you're doing and eventually all the pieces of your hard work are going to fall in line together so now uh we're done with the first interview with the interview portion of our interview um okay. but now we're going to go ahead and move on to our lightning round so I'm going to ask you 10 questions about yourself and you just answer them as fast or however you want to answer them so we're going to go ahead and start it but are you guys ready for lightning round with daddy limelight Ooh, yeah i'm nervous <laughs> <laughs> that's a good feeling all right here we go question number one what is your favorite movie training day denzel washington is the man question number two best thing about being a dad um put, waking up every morning when i have her to this beautiful little face right here and being able to show her and raise that standard of what a dad should be like or a man in her life. There you go. Question yeah. number three. Favorite wrestler growing up, which you answered, you answered again. If you smell. <laughs> I love that. Uh, question number four. Favorite wrestling theme song besides your own? Uh, Triple H, my time. Question number five. New York or Los Angeles? New York, 150%. <laughs> Question number six. Dream City to wrestle in. Ooh, dream city to wrestle in. Now we're going to say Tokyo. Question number seven, a cartoon movie or a show that your daughter made you watch that you're embarrassed to actually say you enjoy. Frozen. Let it go. <laughs> Question number eight, best workout music. Oh, uh, hip hop for sure. 90s hip hop. Question number nine, do you have a pre-match ritual? Yes. Every, every, um, before every match, I have a pacifier that my daughter dropped into my suitcase when she was four months old when I made my debut. And I've had the same pacifier in my bag since 2014. So before every match, what? I grab it, I grab it, I kiss it, and then I say a prayer. <laughs> that is awesome. I thought that is awesome. I thought for a second you were gonna say I use it after, after before every match. I was like, what? But no, 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 no. <laughs> I, it's her pacifier. She dropped it in my bag by accident. Um, I've kept it there since. That's really, really cute. Uh, question number 10, last one. Favorite cheat day meal? Oh, every day is a cheat day for me. <laughs> I know, you're eating fries. I was like, wait, how, how do you keep this athletic look and you're eating fries? I, I look I have, at a fry and I gain a pound. I have radioactive genes. I can eat whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be that way. It used to be like that. Something else. But if I could have a, 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 a one good day meal, it's going to be salmon with broccoli and like potatoes. That's my like opposite of cheat day. If I could have one healthy day, that's my go-to meal. That's awesome. All right. So there you go. That's a wrap for us today. But before we go, Danny, where can people find you? Go ahead and plug your social media, Pro Wrestling Tees, et cetera. Hey, everybody. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Danny Limelight. 
Be, and me. And her, yeah. yeah. At Danny Limelight and my pro com backslash Danny Limelight. I'm not hard to find. If you want to reach out, hit me up. Or you can email me at Danny Limelight at gmail.com. Danny, I want to thank you for this really awesome interview, as well as to Khaleesi, who made some awesome cameos during this. Um, if you guys enjoyed this, this interview, please make sure to show some love. Give this video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'm constantly bringing you guys more and more interviews. And go ahead and let me know what you guys thought of the interview in the comments section below. Other than that, uh, we'll see you guys later. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye, guys.